Hey everyone, and welcome to day seven, chapter seven. So glad you're continuing with us in our series on Proverbs. Before we jump into this chapter, let's go to the Lord in prayer, ask him to bless our time together as uh, we dive into his word. Father, we, um, we claim that you are holy and you are righteous and you are good. And Father, before we get into anything, we just want to focus on who you are first, your character. Father, you are sovereign and you are holy. And Father, we thank you that you love us so much that you gave us your word to live by, to study, to apply to our lives, Lord God. And so as we dive into this, may your spirit lead us and guide us. May your spirit teach us um, what we need to learn today, Father. We pray this in your holy and precious son's name. Amen. Amen. So uh, if you've been joining us over the last few chapters, you've been seeing this kind of theme of adultery um, kind of building up over the last few chapters. It kind of concludes in this one in chapter seven. And so today I want to start off by reading verses um, one to five together. I'll be reading out of the ESV version. My son, keep my words and treasure up my commands with you. Keep my commands and live. Keep my teaching as the apple of your eye. Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Say to wisdom, you are my sister, and call insight your intimate friend, to keep you from the forbidden woman, from the adulteress with her smooth words. Yeah, I just I love that passage because these verses really stood out to me today because they really show the kind of the importance and the value and even the love that we need to have for God's commandments and for wisdom. Kind of in these five verses alone, if you were following along, I kind of marked these verses down as I um, was going through. I kind of underlined these lines. He says, you know, keep my words, treasure up my commands, keep my commands, keep my teaching, bind them on your finger, write them on the tablet of your of your um, heart. I mean, I think that's just these are just these practical action things that we need to do. And it goes on and, you know, we see in verse few, four that we are to be kind of so intimate with wisdom that we call her our sister. We're to call in, say, our intimate friend. Um, you, we just kind of see the importance in this passage that we need to cling to the word of God. We need to know the word of God. And all of this has been kind of building up to this next section. There's a specific reason why we need to do all this. This isn't about being poetic and pretty. There's a purpose behind doing all that. And we kind of see that towards the end of verse five, right? Verse five says, to keep you from the forbidden woman, from the adulteress with her smooth words. And so what follows in verses six to 23, we see how seductive and alluring this adulterous woman can be. She easily entraps this young man and he's quickly on the wrong path. And I kind of want to pick up again in verses 21 to 23. And I really hope you've read that rest of that section on your own, but for the time for the sake of time let's pick up back in verse 21 with much seductive speech she persuades him with her smooth talk she compels him all at once he follows her as an ox goes to the slaughter or as a stag is caught fast till an arrow pierces its liver as a bird rushes into a snare he does not know that it will cost him his life i just i love that last line right he does not know that it's going to cost him his life and this, um, this passage just reminds me that sin can be alluring. It can be seductive. It can seem like a good idea. It can have the element of excitement and thrill. But in the end, it costs us our life. In the end, it costs us everything. And I think this chapter gives us just really great picture of what we our lives look like apart from wisdom, right? And I think God is warning us in this passage, cling to his words, cling to his commandments, write them um, on the tablet of your heart, bind them on your fingers, keep my words, treasure my word, because in doing so, you preserve your life. In doing so, we stay off of the path of destruction. I know for me personally, as I'm reading this chapter, a couple takeaways that I kind of jotted down for myself um, really come from those first couple verses, um, verses one to, f- one to five. And it's for me, it's kind of like doing this maybe weekly check, daily check for some of us of just kind of asking myself some questions like, do I, do I treasure up God's commands? And how can I do that more? Do I keep God's teachings so close that they're written on the tablet of my heart? Am I so close to wisdom and insight that it's like a sister or an intimate friend? 
you know, I have to kind of ask myself, am I so focused on Jesus that I know when the path of the adulterers is before me? And am I so close to God's commands that that path doesn't even look appealing? Because I know the path will kind of cost me my life. It'll cost me everything. And so for me, these were just some kind of some food for thought as I, uh, I kind of went through chapter seven and kind of unpacked it for myself. And I know for me, again, that takeaway is, am I treasuring up God's command? Am I writing it on the tablet of my heart? Am I focused on God's word so much that I see when there's that path of destruction before me that's going to cost me my life? So just kind of some food for thought as we uh, wrap up to chapter 7. I hope you have a great day, and uh, I hope you enjoy this chapter as you, as you study it for yourself.